it's 6.13. Wellbeing Wednesday on 5 Live Drive. It is that time of the week again when we look at different aspects of mental health and well-being. It is, of course, Wellbeing Wednesday. Yeah, this week we're going to talk about something you're most likely very familiar with, the home, and specifically how clutter in our living space can contribute to a cluttered mind. With our homes also now doubling up as workplaces because of the pandemic, the chances are that you might be feeling a little bit crowded at home. So to help out with this, we're joined by Suzanne Roynon, who works as what's described as an interiors therapist. It's not a branch of therapy as such, but uh, using things like feng shui to help create a calming home environment. Hello, Suzanne. Hello, Ellie. Hello, Tony. Great to be here. Hello. Yeah, it's great to have you with us. I, I mean, we're all spending a lot more time at home, aren't we? We're having to work from home. We're having to do things at home which you know we wouldn't under normal circumstances do so so how important is it to have that kind of calming environment around us oh it's absolutely essential i mean you know we're all struggling let's be realistic uh, people are living in in fear and they're just concerned all day every day and and the news and everything that they're picking up is it's a constant stressor so to have a safe nurturing welcoming home is just absolutely essential for our well-being mm, and clutter is a part of that as well isn't it and, and actually I, I was going to find this text that we had earlier on which basically said do not get me started on <laughs> clutter do not go there because it's for, for some people it's, you know, some, some people's clutter is another person's precious collection. So, yeah, this is from Lucy in Bedford who says, don't go there on clutter. I'm a total minimalist and my husband is a hoarder. It's really hard. And at times we argue over it. I'd like nothing more than just a TV, table, bed, kettle, sofa. He's so sentimental, collects everything from years ago, will not let anything go. I hate it. It ruins my house-proud nature and really affects my head. And Lucy has just summed it all up, hasn't she, really? She, she absolutely has. You know, um, Home Base did some research recently which said that a quarter of Brits say that when their home is cluttered, they feel like everything else is getting on top of them. And you know from experience, that's absolutely true. So I really feel for Lucy. But I also feel for her husband because he, he's not realising that it's also having an impact on him. And if he sort of did a little bit of this interior therapy work, he'd probably actually be able to streamline it quite a lot and enjoy mm. life. But do you not think that maybe some people will feel like, say, well, I feel secure with all of this stuff around me? It, it is a security blanket, but at the same time, it can cause a massive anxiety, real distress, because actually a lot of the things that we hold on to won't necessarily have a positive emotion attached to them. And that's a, a lot about what I do with people. It's really looking at everything and saying, look, you know, what is this doing to you? Is it a positive emotion or is it actually something quite negative? And if it is a negative side, it can make you sad, it can make you angry, really very, very anxious sometimes. So it's, it's about understanding the impact of everything that's around you and giving yourself the best possible chance of living a happy and enjoyable life. What about work clutter? Because, you know, most of us, as we said, are working from home an awful lot more. And you, unless you're very lucky, you haven't got a specific place to work from. How does that affect you as well? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Having a, a, a space which is purely for work is just such a luxury. And it's something that many people just don't have. So from my perspective, what I think it's really, really important is wherever you work, make that your workplace. So don't sort of gravitate from the bedroom to the sofa to the kitchen table, you know, have a place that is where you work and make sure you've got great lighting. You know, you need to really daylight levels of lighting, even if you need to invest in a little extra light to do that. And then at the end of the day, put everything away. Don't leave the laptops, especially, oh my goodness, especially if you're working in the bedroom, don't leave the laptop and your work papers and all those files and, you know, the highlighter pen. Don't leave that where you can see it because you won't ever relax and actually just wind down and enjoy being at home mm. yourself. You've just, you've described my, my working from my bedroom um, situation, Suzanne, actually, because I have everything set up in the corner of my bedroom, but I have a desk which I can close everything away in. Uh, we're going to come back to this in a second, Suzanne, because we're just going to break away um, because uh, Tony's going to have a quick chat 
about the situation involving uh, the Duke of Edinburgh, um, but we'll come back to Suzanne in just a second. Yeah, we did say we keep people updated with his condition. Uh, we mentioned at the start of the show that he's been admitted to hospital. It was last night, in fact, as a precautionary measure. He'd been feeling unwell. He's in the King Edward's uh, the Seventh Hospital in London. Our correspondent, John Donison, is there. John, hi to you. Thanks for, for coming on. What What's the latest? Hi, Tony. Well, uh, we know that he's still in hospital. What Buckingham Palace have said is that he was driven to hospital yesterday evening. Uh, he was then able to walk into the hospital uh, unaided. And as you say, they are stressing that this is very much a precautionary me measure. He's said to be in good spirits, but Buckingham Palace said he has been feeling unwell uh, for several days and that he's coming to hospital for some rest and recuperation. They have said uh, that this is not uh, related to coronavirus. The Queen remains at Windsor and we know that she's been going about her normal duties today. She's spoken to the Lord, uh, first uh, sea lord, uh, the head of the navy today, and it's sort of business as usual. Uh, and uh, they are very much saying that this is not a cause for alarm, but a precautionary measure. Yeah, um, he, he was vaccinated last month, we know that. And John, any indication then of how long he's going to be in there for? No, I mean, uh, sources at the Palace to have, have said a, a few days. Um, the last time he was in hospital here, which was the same hospital, was in December 2019. And then he came in for treatment on a pre-existing condition. He was in hospital for four days. You might remember he got out, I think, on Christmas Eve, just in time uh, for uh, Christmas. Uh, they did have the vaccination, I think, around about the middle of January, both the Queen and Prince Philip. Uh, and they have been... Uh, shielding if you like at Windsor they've probably been spending more time together this year than they, they might normally uh, but he is 99 years old he's due to celebrate his 100th birthday uh, in June and they're obviously uh, being pretty cautious I think John thank you uh, John Donison there I'm sure we'll be hearing more from John throughout the night here on Five Live and outside the King Edward the seventh hospital in London uh, where the Duke of Edinburgh is at the moment uh, 20 past six Ali back to you yeah, we've just been talking to Suzanne Roynan, who is an interiors therapist. This is part of our Wellbeing Wednesday feature on Drive. And just talking about the impact that clutter, I mean, not just clutter, but just having a, having a tidy, relaxing home. And, and Suzanne, I just wanted to read you this, uh, this text, which we had from Glyn uh, a little bit earlier on, Glyn in Birkenhead. Um, now, Glyn says, I've taken on a new cleaner as due to lung problems. I can't dust and vacuum for myself so that she can do her job properly. I spent three days giving my flat a thorough declutter and reorganized my storage space. So everything that needed to be put away got put away in a tidy, organized way. The result is I don't miss my small items like ornaments and collectibles, like my matchbox cars, etc. Everything I need, I can find as I need it and when I need it. Also, the flat looks and feels considerably lighter, area and more spacious. Even my kitchen worktops have more free workspace now, which is terrific, as I'm a keen cook. The whole process has done wonders for my own mental health. And, but taking on something like that, Suzanne, is quite tricky, isn't it? If you say, right, I know I want to do this, but, but to put aside that time to actually tackle the clutter is quite, takes quite a mental effort in itself. It does, but it's so worth doing. And, and you can start small. You can, you know, set yourself a little challenge and say, right, what can I achieve in 20 minutes? And that might be sorting out a drawer. You know, the junk drawer in the kitchen is, is quite a legendary one. Or if you have um, a coat rack by the door, you know, you can sort that out in 10 minutes or so. And just those little wins will really help you move forward to do the rest. But yes, you're absolutely right. You know, the, the investment of time in dealing with the clutter might feel huge to start with. But, you know, as Glyn said there, once it's done, wow, it makes such a difference. He's got more space to enjoy. He's not worrying about dusting knickknacks. He's got more space to cook in the kitchen. I mean, it's just really improved his quality of life at so many levels just for investing that little bit of time. And let's be realistic, while we're all spending a lot more time at home, it's a great opportunity to do it. Mm. Actually, I moved house in September and I was so daunted because it's a place we'd lived in for 19 years. And it was just the clutter that was making me feel quite stressed. So if somebody's in that situation, how would you recommend they go about it? 
Okay, well, as I say, start at your own pace, but actually dedicate some time to it rather than saying, okay, I'm going to do the whole place in one go. Just give yourself a little target to work to because there are so many ways that your home and your personal effects are going to impact on your emotions and your health and your stress levels. So if you know something's going to be emotional, like say, you know, if you've got a box full of old photographs, you are not going to get through that in 20 minutes. That's a case of a glass of wine, sit down in front of a movie that you know inside out and work through those photos, take out the ones that are blurred or make you feel miserable and just keep the ones that make you feel great. And if you if you work that across everything in your home, you look at everything. Clutter isn't just about, you know, the, the Tupperware in the kitchen or, or, or something like that. It's about anything which doesn't bring you happiness doesn't make you feel good and that's where you know interior therapy differs quite a bit to just straightforward decluttering because we're looking at the emotional attachments to to do stuff as much as anything else that brings us to the nub of the the problem doesn't it um in the sense that what's clutter because you said if it doesn't bring you happiness but lampshades don't do they suzanne so it's <laughs> where, where, where do you even begin to start if you see what i'm saying well, when I'm working with people, we actually just look around the home first and foremost. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at everything that's on display to start with. Why is that there? How does that make you feel? And what I find quite often is that people have just got so immune to their home that it's like they're seeing it for the first time. And, um, you know, especially in the case of somebody who's divorcing or has been even divorced for a long time, they'll look at a picture on the wall and they'll say, oh, tell me about this. And it'll have been taken by their ex. Yeah, that's easier, isn't it? You know, a friend of mine's just gone through a divorce, and 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 you know that's easy to pinpoint. That bit of furniture was bought there. That that kind of thing. It's the stuff we live we've lived with all our lives and just got and got used to. And I suppose the temptation is if we throw if we start throwing everything out, and be going a bit minimalist, then the danger is we might be faced with a bill to replace it in a few months when we're fed up of the open space. Yeah, I, that's not happened with any of the people I've worked with, Touchwood. You know, they're all amazing people. But the process that we use means that you you really take that risk out of the situation because you're really very, very conscious about why you're parting with something, what your justification for that is. So if you know you might want it again, you'll just pop it to one side, maybe even a box for six weeks and I, see if you need it. Just, just a final thought from me before I let Ellie take over again but but Suzanne I just bought a couple of things off eBay that I collected when I was seven so how do you know what you know and that so that was maybe been thrown out 30 40 years ago deemed as clutter and I've suddenly started thinking no I want to see that it was a stamp album I filled with my dad and I wanted it back so I've just bought someone else someone else's off eBay so I'm bringing clutter in but you you I, I'm probably just being deliberately you know argumentative here but you can Clutter can bring comfort in a certain way, can't you? You can start, but you can bring really products can. in. Yeah, I, you know, I there is somebody that I love dearly who has a cupboard stacked full of a particular um, hobby magazine, and there is no way in the world he's parting with those. You know, it's it's important to him. It's special. They're all still in their wrappers. You know, if you if you really love something, if it brings you joy, then keep it. You know, don't get rid of something that you 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 absolutely love to have around you. Mm. But if it's something that isn't serving you, you you don't use it, you don't need it, then let it go to somebody who can use it. Because let's face it, we can recycle pretty much everything now, and who knows, there might even be some money in it for you. Yeah, that's. I think that's good advice, isn't it? And I've seen decluttering programs where they say, right, just make a pile, make a pile, things. To get, to get chucked, things to go to the charity shop and things to, to go to you know, the new house if you're moving house, for example. It, what's, what's been made harder is the fact that, of course, a lot of charity shops haven't been open or most charity shops are not open at the moment. And uh, quite a lot of tips haven't been open as well. Yeah, I, I think, if I'm honest, that the, the bigger charities missed an opportunity here um, not to open sort of big warehouses to allow socially distanced donations. But there are a couple of charities and, you know, I'm not sure that I can mention them because obviously it's the BBC, but there is, is at least or at least two I know of that you can make a donation by free post and it's, 
you know, you take it to your local um, store and they'll just take it away absolutely free. So, and that's what I've been doing a lot of with my clients recently with packaging it all up in boxes and sending it off to charity that way. Yeah, I think it's got really good advice, Suzanne. I wish I'd spoken to you before I moved house. You'd have saved me an awful lot of stress and effort. But um, but yeah, we, we got there in the end. So so thank you very much indeed, Suzanne Royman, who is an interiors therapist. Andy uh, says, uh, my hairdresser told me before lockdown, if you don't love it, you don't need it. It's the best advice I've had mm. in years, which echoes what Suzanne was saying. But Mick, Mick's a man after my own heart. He says he calls himself a bit mad. But he says, I give my ornaments personality and I think they'll be sad if I let them go. I, I, I did say on this programme years ago, Ellie, that I once threw a pair of sandals away and nearly cried because I'd had them 15 years. You yeah, can, you well, can that, get over attached to things. I think the hardest thing about moving house was getting rid of all the soft toys that, or not all of them, obviously, because I'm not, I'm not a horrible mother, but some of the soft toys that, that my kids had collected years and years and years ago and they're now kind of grown up. Um, and anybody who's watched Toy Story finds that a difficult process, I think. Getting rid of toys is really tricky. Yes. Uh, any thoughts on that 85058 just before we have the news and sports? Some exciting